Hi, we are the Linear Algebra 2023 team and we want to introduce you our project, the usage of SVT for image processing. In our digital era, the amount of visual data we are constantly dealing with is incredible. Every day, hundreds of thousands of videos and photos are uploaded to our servers from where we can process them. As we find ourselves in this explosion of visual data, the need for efficient image processing is simply necessary. This is where the linear algebra comes into play, and specifically the technique called the singular value decomposition, or SVD. SVD is used for uh, both compressing images, both uh, reducing the amount of data needed to store for them, and uh, even for noise removal. In the presentation, we will explore how uh, we can uh, exploit this powerful mass technique and uh, how uh, the linear algebra provides the real solution for the real problems, and we can see the beauty and power of the linear algebra. Okay. Singular value decomposition is a fundamental technique in linear algebra that enable us to decompose a matrix into three other matrices. Given a matrix A, SVD decomposes it into U, sigma, and we transpose, where U and V are orthogonal matrices and sigma is a diagonal matrix. In the context of image processing, each of these three matrices has a specific interpretation. SVD is intimately related to the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. The columns of U are the eigenvectors of AAT, and the columns of V are the eigenvectors of ATA. The singular values in sigma are the square roots of the eigenvalues from AAT or ATA, no matter. So, matrix sigma contains the singular values, and those singular values are indicative or the brightness information which would be important for the for our image and uh, the noise and compression. Power method. In this method, we are trying to find the dominant eigenvector of a matrix often holds a <clears throat> which often holds significant information. The power iteration method is an algorithm designed to find this dominant eigenvector and its corresponding eigenvalue. So we start from a random unit vector and then repeatedly multiply this one by a matrix A. And as multiplication proceeds, well, some amount of times, the vector converges towards the dominant eigenvector of the matrix. And the magnitude of the vector approach its corresponding eigenvalue. OK, to find singular values of ATA, the old singular values, we will use deflated method and subtract the outer product of the dominant singular vector by itself scaled by the singular value from the original matrix. This gives us a new matrix, which is essentially the original matrix with the contribution that the dominant singular vector removed. And we will continue this process of deflation and power iteration until we found the the desired uh, number of singular vectors and singular values. Well, after understanding of the SVD and the power method, we can move on to its application in uh, image processing. As we all already know, when we perform SVD, we obtain three components, U, S, and V transpose. If we use all the singular values to reconstruct the image, we will get the original one. But what, what will happen if, if we take just a subset of the singular values and the corresponding singular vectors? This is where the magic happens. We can store the singular values in the descending order and collect the top key values. We also pick the corresponding key columns in U and V transpose. And this reduced matrix can be used to reconstruct an approximation of the original image. But if significantly less data, essentially compressing the image. On the other hand, if we take too small p, we can lose too much data that will result in a pretty messy image. So how to find the optimal p? To solve this task, we used a commutative sum approach, 
we can imagine that the singular value holds some energy uh, as this the amount of this energy is is depending on the magnitude of the singular value and it corresponds to the quality of the image it would be great to keep a 90 percent of quality isn't it so what we can do uh, so what we can do we simply uh, take the 90 percent fraction of the total uh, energy and then find a commodity sum of the singular values sorted in the distancing order and the last step is to find this the point where we come through this 90 percent fraction uh, and on the other slide you can see what uh, results we obtained as you can see is we, using this energy method uh, all of our images are well compressed and have recognized recognizably the same level of quality uh, if we had reduced uh, the energy level lower than 90 percent we would have a worse quality and vice versa so in addition to compression svd can also be used for image denoising as we said the key actually is in the concept of the of the noise those uh, little grains on your photo they are uh, in fact spread among all the uh, singular values of your photo whereas uh, the uh, meaningful information actually uh, is saved in the greater one so when you reduce the lower one singular values you reduce actually the great part of that noise and it can effectively eliminate all the significant portion of the image corruption while retaining still the crucial details of the image uh, the actually the thing we have to keep in mind here is that uh, if the choice of the threshold is uh, way too low then uh, not enough noise will be removed and vice versa if the uh, choice is too high then the uh, then some of the crucial parts of the image will be hard therefore we use the uh, mean square error approximation on our big data set and decided on uh, which the value uh, of the expected MSE would be fitting us. As you can see, the uh, denoising doesn't work as well uh, via SVD as it works uh, for the compression. So actually the denoise needs uh, some other techniques that we didn't include and it actually proves that uh, SVD is not as versatile as it was considered by us. So thank you for the attention.